Hey guys, it's Ken here. It's been a long while. No, it hasn't been a long while. It's just been like two days. Anyway, today I'll be wearing my glasses today because I felt really, really groggy this morning. Like, couldn't see things properly. Had my morning and afternoon coffee, but still feeling really groggy and tired and can't really see things properly. Becoming old. Anyway, today I'll be talking about public speaking. And if you have been a non existent fan of Ken, of Chatty Ken, of this YouTube channel, you would have watched my previous video on public speaking, overcoming your fear of public speaking, where I talked about three feelings that you should have in public speaking so that you can overcome your fear of public speaking. Today, I'll be talking about public speaking again, but I'm going to focus on a very specific area of public speaking. The area that I'm the best at, the area that a lot of people are afraid of, the area that everyone seems to think is the hardest aspect of public speaking. And I'm going to talk about impromptu speaking. Now, to boost my credibility a little bit, I have been a public speaking teacher for the last uh, four or five years and I've coached people of different age from primary school up to work life in impromptu speaking prepared speech speeches I've taken part in contests and I've won in a variety of Toastmasters school and non-Toastmasters non-school just different different types of contests and my greatest strength has always been impromptu speaking and it could stem from my passion for speaking and trash talk and anyway, enough of the joke let's get straight into it Impromptu speaking is basically speaking off the cuff. So what that means is that you don't get kind of prepared. In an impromptu speaking contest, you basically go to the front and the person gives you a title and you have to start speaking off the cuff. You don't get a time to prepare. And I feel that impromptu speaking is really, really helpful because it is not only applicable in the context of speaking contests or competitions, it is also applicable in real life. It's almost applicable in all contexts, like in formal contexts, we will be looking into interviews so you don't get time to prepare and you have to speak off the cuff and talk, uh, answer the questions that the interviewer is asking. In an informal context, impromptu speaking would be when you, you know, you see your ex and you want to feel happy and you want to talk about the good things in life rather than tell her how hurt you are about breaking up with you. I gotta say, impromptu speaking is very, very hard. Impromptu speaking is hard for a variety of reasons. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm gonna talk about two reasons, two main reasons why impromptu speaking is hard or rather why people think impromptu speaking is hard. The first reason is because people lack confidence. They don't have the confidence or reassurance to say what they think or to say what people want to hear. They have no confidence. They're like, oh, what if people think I'm too fat, short, ugly, or whatever. Second reason why impromptu speaking is hard or rather why people think it's hard is that people have no idea. Imagine being in a contest and you go up and the person gives you a topic like words are powerful and you go what am I supposed to talk about again? You got no idea, you don't know what to talk about. Or you see your ex and she's like, hey Ken, how are you doing these days? And you're just kind of like, um, you don't know what to say, you got no confidence, you got no idea, you just don't know what to say and you don't want that. So today I'll be sharing four, four impromptu speaking strategies that you could use in your everyday life and in speaking contests and you know, uh, wedding speeches and all that stuff to boost your impromptu speaking skills and make you a more confident person, a speaker with ideas, so that you will never be afraid of impromptu speaking again. The first strategy, strategy number one, is that you can agree or disagree with the topic. Especially in an impromptu speaking contest, when you get a topic like words are powerful, don't just get straight into it. Think about whether or not you agree or disagree with the topic. And if you want a wow factor, think about something that everyone is likely to say and don't say that. Just go for the special way out. For example, in a contest that I took part in a few years back, the topic was words are powerful. And I thought that everyone's not to talk about how words are powerful, how you know English lit and Shakespeare, how literature in general is changing the world because words are powerful and all that. And I didn't want the judges to think that, you know, oh everyone's to talk about words are powerful, so it's gonna be boring. Um, nobody's gonna stand out. What I did was that I tweaked it a bit and I said, oh, words are not powerful. Why? Because I first defined powerful. Powerful means the person or a thing can stand on its own and still be effective and and be and have the power that it's supposed to have. But if you're not words, words are just like abstract things, non-living things. It is dependent on a living thing, like a human thing, to be powerful. So I so my conclusion is that words are not powerful. People who are using the words effectively are powerful. See, wow factor. Nobody talks about it. I think I did pretty well in the contest. I can't remember, but I I, I, did, I definitely got a trophy. But enough of me blowing my own trumpet. The thing is, you can agree or disagree with the topic. If you get a topic about homework is useful, you can agree with the topic saying that homework can boost you know, memorization skills and uh, practice questions and all that thing. And then you can say that homework is not helpful because you know school students are supposed to have holistic lives rather than focus on homework. Think of different different ways where you can agree or disagree with the topic and then make your speech as interesting as possible. Second strategy of impromptu speaking, zooming into specific words. I think I kind of talked about that in the beginning where, where, when I said uh, words are powerful. So when you get a topic like words are powerful, 
you gotta decide which words to really zoom into. You can zoom into the word words, you can zoom into the words powerful. You can be like, I'm gonna define words as this. I'm gonna define powerful as this. Or when you look at the topic, homework is useful, you can zoom into the two specific words that are right there. First word, homework. You can also zoom into the word useful. Define what you mean by homework, define what you mean by useful. If you want to zoom into the word is, something that I have not done before. You can try that and see how it goes. You might end up being the most special speaker in the contest. The thing is when you zoom into specific words, you actually know and you have a focused target. You actually know what you're gonna talk about. You have a very specific, narrow, and really, really particular topic and point that you're gonna focus on. And when you have to find the words that you wanna define, that you wanna zoom into, that you wanna focus on, the audience can really, really follow your thought process and interpretation of the topic. And that makes your speech more coherent and Many times it's going to make you more confident, you're going to have more ideas because when you define a word in the way that you want to, you're going to speak your mind like, you know, you're going to speak whatever you're thinking and as long as you don't go off tangent and talk about something completely different and bizarre, I think you're going to master that moment of impromptu speaking. The third strategy of impromptu speaking, tell a story. Now this is most useful and most helpful and most effective in informal context. When your ex-girlfriend comes to you and says, Hey Kian, how are you doing? Tell a story. Oh, I've been doing great. You know, um, I've been playing badminton a lot. And the other day, I did this, I did that. I, I smashed, I killed my opponent. No, I beat my opponent and I won, you know, I'm doing great. And then inside you think, even though I feel very sad and I miss you. Anyway. Telling a story is always useful because as people, I think it's human nature that we're always nosy, trying to find out more about other people, trying to find out more about how people are doing and you know, gossip about people. Not necessarily a great thing, but then as human beings, we love listening to stories. You know how in speeches, even in prepared speeches, people tell you, don't start in a generic way. Hi, my name is Ken and today I'll be talking about words are powerful. I mean, sometimes you can start with a quote, words are powerful. Many people have said this and I think that blah blah blah, but hey, when you tell a story, you really really grab my attention. For example, when I was younger, I never knew how powerful words could be. Until one day, I went to my sister and said, you're fat. Boom! I got a slap in the face. So that makes it more interesting, makes it more entertaining. You, you have the suspense in there because there's a storyline. People want to know what's going to happen next and people can listen to you more. And in that moment, you are definitely, definitely going to be the king of impromptu speaking. Trust me, you guys. Never fails. Always works. Strategy number four, the last strategy. Did you know, especially in contests or when you meet your ex, you could tell a lie. You could lie, you could lie, you could blah, even though it's unethical to deceive people. I think, for the purpose of contests especially, you could lie. For example, I once had a topic on, do you prefer to exercise in the morning or in the evening? In my mind, I was literally thinking, come on man, what the hell kind of stupid question is that? Do you exercise in the morning or in the afternoon? Even if I answered that question, oh I exercise in the morning or in the afternoon, how am I going to explain that? So what I did is, I told a lie. I told Okay, someone's messaging me right now. Let me just turn my phone on silence because I'm a professional YouTuber. Not. Nah. You could lie, you could lie, you could lie, you could lie. In that contest, I happened to be wearing a shirt which is tight, showed my physique a little bit. I mean, I don't have huge muscles like bodybuilders, but I have a decent physique. So what I did was that I went forward and I showed everyone my body. And I was like, well, you see all these muscles here? My lean body and, you know, my abdominal muscles which are almost prominent. I didn't get this from exercising. I got this from watching Coach Greg. I told a lie and I made the lie interesting. So the important thing about telling a lie is that you gotta make it interesting because people only wanna listen to interesting stories and lies. If you tell a lie that's like kinda like, ah, I don't really care. If you lie is something like, oh, did you know that I usually wear glasses but today I'm not wearing glasses? People are gonna be like, okay, how does that matter? But if you tell people something like, do you know that I once wore- Hey, did you know that I once wore fake glasses and girls found me more attractive? People are likely to believe in that and be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I want to go to my class find me more attractive. People are going to find that lie interesting. Tell an interesting lie, make sure people want to listen to you. So with these four strategies, you're going to have more confidence, more ideas, and you're going to have more things to talk about. It's going to make your impromptu speaking experience and confidence more enjoyable and more high, and you're going to be a great impromptu speaker. But you see, at the end of the video, I actually want to share with you three impromptu speaking techniques. So see, you're learning seven things today. Seven things today, four strategies, three techniques, that makes seven. So if you think that you have learned something, before I get into the techniques, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and share it to your friends and family. Right, let's get into the techniques. The first technique that I wanna teach you is to speak slowly. Don't be like, kid, don't stop talking too fast that you started too much. So when you're doing impromptu speaking, you wanna give yourself time to think about what you're gonna say next. When you wanna say that words are not powerful, you really wanna think about how you're gonna express and convince the audience and the judges that words are not powerful. When you wanna tell your girlfriend, or your ex-girlfriend, a story. 
you want to make a lie. You want to make sure that the lie is actually believable. So you want to speak slowly to give yourself and buy enough time a stalling technique to make sure that you know what you're going to talk about next. And you should speak at the speed like how I'm doing right now. That was the first impromptu speaking technique. Did you know that you can also use the speaking more slowly technique in your prepared speeches? If you're presenting an inspirational speech and halfway through you forget a line, it's gonna be something like, believe in yourself, don't quit, don't quit. Shit, what's my line next? But if you speak more slowly, you actually get time. You buy time to think about what you're gonna say next. It's gonna be something like, believe in yourself. Do not quit. The next line was, yes, don't quit. So yeah, that's the first technique, speak more slowly. Second technique that you could use in both your impromptu and prepared speeches is to use repetition. You see, using repetition is a really, really special technique. You can stall time and you could also make yourself sound more certain and convincing. For example, if you talk about racism and you're trying to convince people that racism is bad, you use repetition in such a way. I believe that racism is really contaminating the human brain. I believe that racism is making society fall apart. I believe that racism should stop. And I believe that racism can stop if you stop being racist. You see, halfway through, you sound like you've actually written a speech and you sound like you actually know what you're gonna talk about. But hey, see, you made this all up. You speak more slowly. I spoke slowly today. I knew what I was gonna say next. And then when you use your position, people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, this person is actually really, really convincing. When in fact, you're just thinking about what you should say next. Third technique is something that I've actually mentioned when I talk about the first strategy, which is to stand out. When you get a generic topic like, do you think the glass is half full or half empty? Don't just go, I believe that the glass is half full because we should all be positive and we should not be negative. We should, you know, um, adopt a positive thinking mindset. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, C, if there are 10 contestants there, I believe that 8 or 9 contestants are going to talk about being positive. And you want to stand out. You want to make sure that there's a wow factor in your speech. So, in this case, you could integrate humor. There was one time when I was in an impromptu speaking contest, I got the exact same topic. Is the grass half full or half empty? In my mind, I was like, okay, right. 7 people or 8 people are going to talk about positivity. There are 2 people who might stand out, might talk about how the grass is half empty and how viewing the glass as half empty could be useful. I was like, all right, I'm not gonna talk about half empty, half full. I'm not gonna focus on positivity, negativity, whatever. So what I did was this. Is the glass half full or half empty? Honestly, I don't know what glass we're talking about, but I believe that there are simpler ways to tell people to be positive. And at that time when I said that, the audience was like, ha ha ha, this person can make puns and can make people laugh. And I ended up winning the contest, so it's a good thing. Stand out, use humor, make people laugh. That's actually all I'm talking about. Four strategies for impromptu speaking. Agree or disagree with the topic. Zoom into specific words. Tell a story or tell a lie. And then three impromptu speaking techniques. Speak more slowly, use repetition, and make sure that you stand out. Standing out, let me just remind you, it's a wow factor in both formal context and informal context. Because you know, when you meet your ex girlfriend, you wanna stand out. And that's all I have. Watching my video, you learned seven things today. Four plus three, seven things. Four strategies, three techniques. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe. And I hope that you've learned something interesting today. And I hope that the next time when you deliver a speech in front of a crowd, or when you meet your ex-girlfriend, or when you win an Oscar and you didn't expect it and you have to deliver an impromptu speech, you do better with the four strategies and three techniques, seven things that you have learned in today's video. Please like, share, subscribe, watch my previous video on peer pressure and racism, watch my crappy cover of Homicide by Eminem and Logic. That's all I have to share today, and I hope to see you guys very, very soon. And I'm out this time. Bye.